Here is Jesus, and, and he hears this horrific news how his cousin, who is very close to, died, was executed, was, was basically falsely accused. And, and Jesus just wants to get away. I mean, it's understandable. He wants to collect himself. John opens up the picture a little bit more in verse three of John chapter six and says, Jesus sees this. He went up to the mountain and he sat down with his disciples. And then in Luke chapter nine in verse 11, again, all this is happening at once. When the crowd learned it, they followed him and watch this. And Jesus welcomed them. Jesus saw them and he welcomed them. He received them. Jesus sees you today. He sees where you're at. He sees your need. He sees your heart. He sees who you are. The Bible says he spoke to them about the kingdom of God and cured those that were in need. Listen, Jesus' love for us is so great that he sees us he meets our need even at a point where he himself was in need. Amen. He was hurting. He was physically drained. I mean, this is, this is amazing to me. Literally, it says he gladly received them. There was something in his heart that says, you know what? I see you and I want to help you. I mean, this is not Jesus sitting down with his disciples and then, and then all of a sudden hundreds, thousands of people start coming. And it's not Jesus so tired and he's so exhausted and he's hurting, he's mourning because of his, his cousin and Jesus lifts up his head, sees everybody, looks at his disciples and says, oh my word, when is this ever going to stop? Oh, God, these people are so draining. They're so draining. Come on, guys. We got to do this. Let's go. I mean, when has this got to stop? That's not what happened. Jesus Christ sees you. Amen. I love this. There will never be a time when God will turn you away. Ever. Ever. No matter how many mistakes, no matter what is going on in your life, no matter how many times you've prayed, no matter how many times you come to him. What I love about this too is corporately, as we're asking God what's next for River of Life, I mean, we've been through our ups and downs as a church. Listen, there's no perfect church. I, I'm just telling you that. Because there's no perfect people. Do you agree? Just in case you're in trouble if you think you're perfect, but, but, but we're not, none of us. And so there's never going to be a time when we come, because we, we fasted and prayed for a week before we did this outreach. And there's never gotta come a time where Jesus says, oh my word, it's river of life again. When are they ever going to get it? When are they ever going to, to learn? Never will there ever come a day, you know, when I cry out to God and I ask God and I don't see my prayers answered or I'm wondering what's taking so long. God, I've been here for 25 years and I don't see what I know in my mind should be. And, and the, hey, there's times I come frustrated to God. You say, what in the heck's going on? What are you doing up there? Why aren't you listening? Why aren't you answering? Listen, there will never come a day, no matter how I come. But when I come to God, he's not going to say, oh, my word, it is Dale Donatio again. The same prayer, the same thing. I keep showing him, he's just not listening. I'm sick of him coming. I'm exhausted. Never is that going to happen. Is that awesome or what? I mean, that, that is encouraging. He's not going to say, you know what? There's 7 billion people on this earth. And you know what? You're just one more problem that I have. Humanly here, 
Jesus is, is so sad, grief-stricken, tired. He's worn out. But the heart of God is he sees people and he welcomes them. He doesn't see them and turn them away. He sees them and receives them, which is amazing.